Welcome to a new In The Mail, the most popular segment hosted here on the channel and for today I have lots of really cool gadgets to show so stick around for that. I'm gonna start the video with this Xiaomi uh, slash Honeywell smoke uh, fire alarm sensor. Now obviously Honeywell is a very well established brand when it comes to uh, sensors so Xiaomi partnering with them totally uh, makes sense for this product and you'll likely find a bunch of different variants for uh, this sensor available on the market. Uh, this one in particular um, is uh, model number GD-03MI-BB and this means it is the Bluetooth connection sensor. I initially wanted a uh, Zigbee sensor but I couldn't uh, find it in stock with Banggood so I had to go for this Bluetooth one. It shouldn't be a major issue as I have Bluetooth connection on my Home Assistant server. Um, that's the plan to connect this via Bluetooth to Home Assistant so that I get smoke alarm capability uh, via Home Assistant. I could also use this with a Xiaomi gateway and get the notifications in the Xiaomi app but I prefer to use the Home Assistant app and uh, this device seems to be supported by the passive BLE integration which should automatically discover it. Now this sensor uses a CR17450 lithium battery which is not that common and they tend to be more expensive because of that. Luckily it does come with a uh, included battery in the box which should last up to 5 years according to the datasheet. I would be happy even if it lasted just two years and would consider anything about that a bonus. I have yet to test this. I will be running some tests after installing it, but I can tell you that it also provides some local light and sound alarms, so you don't need to rely on having it connected. It will sound an 80 dB buzzer when smoke is detected. And just considering that it uses that Honeywell uh, sensing technology with the higher quality, of Xiaomi products this has to be uh, more reliable than the no-name brands that you can find online so if you're interested in getting one there will be a link provided in the description below. The sponsor of this video PCBWay.com is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times but you can get more than PCBs manufactured with PCBWay they also do PCB assembly, injection molding, 3D printing, machining various parts so you can have an entire prototype built using their services. Check out their website linked below. My next item is also a very interesting gadget that should improve my home office desk setup. It is an LED lamp and a high quality one I might add that comes with an interesting set of features. And this particular lamp is manufactured by Baseus. Uh, I, I don't know if you are familiar with this brand. They're very similar in quality with Xiaomi products and I tend to use their uh, USB cables and uh, I also have one of their USB hubs. They're excellent price to quality ratio. Now I have decided to give their LED lamp a try and uh, I was very pleasantly surprised with this and let me tell you a few key specs about this LED lamp. It's got a uh, rated power of 5 watts which should be sufficient as a desk reading lamp. Uh, its color rendering index is higher than 95 and this means the lamp coming from this is going to show colors as close as possible uh, to the real color and this is excellent news for your eyes and the color temperature is adjustable in uh, three steps. You have 3000K, 4000K and 6000K and these ranges are perfect for me. I'll probably keep it on the 3000K setting for most use cases. The light output on this lamp is dimmable with a touch button available on the unit or you can let it do that automatically with its uh, built-in light sensor which uh, it can use to automatically turn on the lamp and adjust brightness. There is USB Type-C input for powering the lamp and a built-in rechargeable 2.2 amp hours battery which feels like there is maybe an 18650 cells in there that would make sense and that's going to give you a claimed 13 hour battery life on the dimmest setting uh, with a total charge time of three hours. So everything sounds really good so far and I haven't even talked about the aluminum body construction which is really high quality. There is a lens in front of the LEDs which gives you very good light distribution and just the overall form factor seems perfect for my desk. Uh, the cost is not too bad either so I can definitely recommend something like this if you want a high quality modern looking lamp on your desk. A link to banggood.com for this product will be provided in the description of the video so check it out. 
My third item is yet another interesting find because I was on a search for a cordless electric drill that I could use around the house for various jobs like installing a TV mount or some furniture on the wall, stuff like that. It needed to be a hammer drill. Now the first option that I looked at it was this entry level Bosch hammer drill which was in the range of $300 and it came with two 18 volt batteries, two joules rating. Now this is a pretty popular choice for entry level stuff but still it had that $300 price tag and I was going to use it maybe two or three times per year. As you may remember, I got this cordless drill from Banggood two years ago. I reviewed this in Volog 285 and I have used it a lot since then for drilling metal, wood, installing screws, even for impact type applications, something which is clearly not designed for. And I'm still surprised how well it held up after two years of usage. Sure, the charger that came with uh, it was crap, one of the batteries died because I left it discharged, but because it was easily accessible, I opened it up and just replaced the cells with a higher capacity uh, model, so it was a relatively easy fix that also brought a massive battery life improvement. Now, based on, on this experience, I thought why not try out a cheap Chinese hammer drill as well. And here it is. Uh, Banggood sent me one to show on video. It's clearly a copy of a uh, Bosch hammer drill and it comes with two batteries inside the box, a uh, charger and this uh, soft carry case. It of course has the obligatory um, overrating of the specs. It mentions 68 volts on the battery pack but max and 10,000 milliamp hour rating but I've gotten used to this kind of ratings on Chinese products. It doesn't mean anything, the tool is still just as usable, I just have to forget about these overrated specs. This one sells for $130 uh, depending on the current available discount and promotion, uh, but the nice thing is that it's available in their EU warehouse, so I could have this delivered via courier in a week. So I immediately put this to a test having to drill some mounting screw holes in a concrete wall. Uh, I used an 8mm drill bit for this, a no-name one, but it still did a very good job at drilling into that very hard wall. Uh, here is a sample video. Uh, I used one of these uh, 3D printed uh, dust collector helpers which works superbly by uh, keeping stuck to the wall on its own. The only issue I can complain about is the rather noisy operation of the drill. Like I've used other hammer drills in the past and they were not as noisy as this one is. So you absolutely should use ear and eye protection when using this tool. I'm not sure why it's so noisy. I mean even when not under load just turning it on sounds very loud when compared to other hammer drills that I've used. And here is a short sample of that. Uh, please uh, lower your volume. It may have to do with how the uh, internal gears are designed because it does sound like gears uh, or gear mechanism uh, grinding. The charger for this feels barely okay uh, because you have this clip mechanism but inside I would expect to find the same very low quality 21 volts power supply. Next up I got myself some of these heat shrink sleeve connectors which have the low melting point uh, solder ring inside uh, that melts and secures the electrical connection uh, when you apply hot air. And I've recently used up the ones that I had so I had to replenish my stock. These come in different sizes depending on uh, which wires uh, you plan to connect. With the selection that I have here, I can go from 0.5 up to 6 square millimeters wire size. They also have some form of glue lining the inside walls, so it kind of seals and waterproofs the connection point, which is also a nice touch. No mention of the actual temperature needed, but I would say most people I've seen tend to use a simple heat gun, which typically outputs higher than 200 degrees Celsius, which is going to be more than enough to melt the uh, solder inside of these. These are something definitely to keep around for when you're going to need them. Next, I got a couple of servo motor accessories as part of my experiments uh, for the servo valve automation project on which I've published a separate video. This is one of those bigger metal servo horn uh, made out of aluminium. It feels very nice and would be a good fit if you're using a high torque servo motor. 
And these are some disc shaped servo arms, again, made of uh, metal and could be used to attach a servo head to another object. And although I had quite a few different servo accessories from my RC planes, I didn't have anything like this so far, hence why I got these. Next, I got some mounting hardware in the form of these uh, M4 hex black screws in 10mm uh, and 6mm length. And I have quite a decent selection of M3 screws, but not enough on the M4 selection. So I'm starting to add these to my kit as well. As usual, I prefer to get this kind of stuff from AliExpress because of the very wide selection available. I can choose the type of head, the length, the thickness, the color. And there is nothing like that available locally for me at least in the small quantities that I need to purchase. And also in the mounting hardware department, I got some of these M3 hex nuts with uh, the built-in washers and I have two different types uh, in here. I'm not sure of the correct name for this, but um, this one uh, on the right has the multi-tooth type washer. Uh, well, this one has just the extended flange type design with the grooves that help lock it in place. It's very convenient to use these because I don't need to worry about inserting a separate washer uh, when installing them. Next, I got a set of these uh, high sensitivity vibration switches and the uh, model number on these is SW-18015P. These were very inexpensive, but I just can't remember why I got them. Uh, I don't think I have any ongoing project where I want to use a vibration sensor, so I just don't remember why I got them. Maybe I just bought them because they looked interesting and they were cheap enough to buy, even if I don't have a project in mind right now. But the construction is very simple. As you can see in this close-up shot, there is a central electrode and a spring around that. And whenever the two make contact, you can detect that with some external circuitry. But since this is a vibration switch, which is going to be subjected to vibrations, I wonder how the very uh, thin spring contact um, connection, which is that very thin copper wire, I wonder how that's going to be dealing with uh, vibrations. My next item is a set of these uh, reed switch sensors and the part number on these is MKA07101 and I got this particular model because it was the uh, smallest physical size uh, reed switch that I could find on AliExpress. I'm going to use something like this to read my analog um, water meter which has a magnet inside that passes through a window for every X amount of volume that goes through the meter. I have already put one of these on the meter, hooked it up to an ESP32, uh, flashed Tasmota, configured that input as a counter and I was able to get some readings back uh, from the meter. But the position of the sensor is quite critical because the magnet is very small so you need to have the sensor in a very specific position on the water meter to get those readings. Uh, but more on that in a separate video where I will be uh, designing some circuitry to take care of those readings and just report back to Home Assistant via MQTT. Next, I have some very interesting display technology to show you. I just have to be really careful not to lose these really tiny and cute segment display modules. These are based on TN panels with reflective polarizer films, no backlight, no driver. And I have the two digit version here and the three digit version. And just look at how small these are and when compared to my, my fingers. So they're like smaller than the size of my fingernail. So I believe these could enable some very interesting miniaturized projects. These certainly were very popular when I shared a picture of these on my Twitter account. I don't have anything in mind, but I know for sure that some of my viewers are very creative and could imagine some interesting projects using one of these. So let me know in the comments what you would build using one of these very small uh, display modules and check out the links in the description if you're looking to get some. The particular shop where I got them uh, had loads of other interesting display modules. And I have yet another tiny display module here. This one is based on uh, OLED technology. Uh, 0.42 inch I2C interface, 72 by 40 pixels, and I will add some sample images during uh, editing. So once again, share any project ideas that could make use of such a tiny display in the comments below. This one obviously has the advantage of using just two pins for the I2C interface and also being a graphical panel, you get those 72 by 40 pixels to show whatever you please. I'm very interested in uh, seeing your uh, creativity at work. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you would build with something like this. 
Next, I got some port covers for uh, male BNC connectors. So this would go on the connectors on your oscilloscope, for example, to protect them from dust. And I got a pack of these uh, silicone sleeves for SMA connectors. It, this is just a cheap way of keeping your connectors in good shape when not in use. Not much else to talk about uh, regarding these. And the last item in today's video is this pair of tactical gloves. And I kind of hear the comments coming that these are some crappy gloves and that uh, the best brand for these is the Mechanics brand. And sure, those are better, but I also don't feel like spending $30 plus shipping on a pair of these uh, tactical gloves from uh, Mechanics. These ones, for example, were just under $10 shipping and tax included. So that's a third of the cost of the Mechanics set. And I've spent quite a bit of time studying the AliExpress listings for these uh, tactical gloves in search of the best option. And I've looked through the user reviews and the user uploaded images as well. And I think I've made a good choice with these. It, this is the M size and it fits my hand perfectly. And they generally feel nice with a couple of things to mention. First, this insert in the palm of the hand is something I would prefer not to have. Uh, but I understand that they use that to strengthen that part. And, and secondly, the fingertips are just a bit too fat on the uh, finger end, especially um, due to the way they are uh, stitched together. Not as bad as I've seen with other models, but still not ideal for grabbing very small stuff. Now, overall, it's well worth the $10 I paid for them. And um, I'm still not ready to spend $30 ordering online a pair of uh, mechanics just to find out that they don't fit as nice as, as I would expect them to.